Welcome to Africa Media Australia. My name is Clyde and tonight um, we'll be talking about the Sudanese community. I have here in the studio uh, Kurt, uh, who is going to introduce uh, himself. Very good, Clyde. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Kurt Mono and I am a South Sudanese Australian and I'm glad to be here and talking and discussing issues about or some of the positive highlight about the Sudanese community. Absolutely, you've said it. We're really going to be talking about some of the very uh, positive highlights uh, in the Sudanese uh, community. Uh, we unfortunately, from time to time, get uh, media report, media stories that appear to be uh, negative. We really want to highlight the the very positive ones and some of the, ch the challenging issues too. So um, for someone who doesn't know the Sudanese community, um, tell us uh, how big is uh, the community um, Australia wide? Uh, the community is very, very big. I think before a uh, referendum early last year, I mean in July last year when South Sudan became a different nation, yeah. Sudan as a whole was probably one of the biggest country in Africa. Yeah. It has over 200 tribes, mm -hmm. I should say, and uh, various languages and dialects which are spoken by a number of people. And if, if you reflect that in terms of uh, the settlement in Australia, obviously there are uh, cohorts of each and the very community groups that are here and the community in terms of the settlement in Australia should be uh, more than 20,000 people mm. and not to mention those who were born here and yeah. obviously identify themselves as Australian and, and not, not Sudanese because obviously the uh, fact that they have been born here over the last uh, 10 years or over 10 years since uh, First Sudanese started arriving in 1996-97 onwards, mm -hmm. and a majority arriving from 2000-2002. Yeah. So there should be a significant proportion of Su Sudanese. Sudanese. So we're talking over 20,000, you said? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, that's, that's quite a lot. And, and it's, it's probably, uh, uh, or even definitely, the, the, the biggest uh, African group uh, in Australia, isn't it? Uh, yes, it, it is. And I think Victoria, from memory, unless if it has changed, has got uh, quite a significant proportion of Sudanese people mm -hmm. and followed by Sydney. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, well, tell us a bit about yourself, your own story. Uh, when did you come to Australia? What circumstances led you to come to Australia? And um, how you've been faring uh, since? I came to Australia in 2004 and I came to Australia uh, obviously having fled South Sudan. Uh, or Sudan at that time in 1989 to go to Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. I was seven years old and I lived in Ethiopia for three years and we fled Ethiopia as a result of another internal destabilization or a civil war and we came to Kenya and I've lived in Kenya for 12 years and I came in uh, in Australia, I mean I came to Australia in 2004 and I've lived here for the last eight years. Mm. All right, and um, how did you find Australia when, when, when you got in? What, what was going in, in your mind? I suppose when you get issued with a visa, you obviously very excited, very excited <laughs> and uh, you have big dreams and big aspirations in terms of what you want to accomplish and yes. you want to achieve. And, and then as some of my friends used to term it, you know, they call it a promised land where you need to start <laughs> all over again. <laughs> where you need to start all over again and put a lot of, uh, uh, obviously, uh, misdeeds and obviously misgiving that you have faced throughout your life behind yeah. you and start afresh. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And, and, and you've done quite well. I mean, you know, you were a lawyer uh, working with, uh, I guess, Slater Gordon. It's, it's quite an achievement, isn't it? Well, I suppose, yes, obviously, I don't have to blow my trumpet a lot. <laughs> I'll blow it for you, my friend. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I, I don't know how to food it, but yes, it is an achievement, and uh, I'm somehow privileged as well to be working with Slade and Gordon and to be privileged to be a lawyer. And I think the uniqueness of the role comes in the sense that that when you see yourself as someone who is there to help other people get justice or mm -hmm. fight for that justice, yes. I think that's the more satisfactory part of it and yeah. that is what I enjoy, what I do. Alright, and was it very hard, law school? I, 
Well, many people may say it is hard. Many people, I mean, some people may say it is not. And generally, it is challenging from my own perspective. Uh, there is a lot of reading involved, uh, a lot of deadlines in terms of submitting essays and having to wake up in early hours of the morning to do free reading classes and having to stay up late at night doing yeah. research and doing all those sort of things. But I think there is nothing that is too hard as to overcome your own will and ambition to accomplish what you want to do. Mm. Depends on how motivated you are to, to achieve that. Yes. Well, that's good. And um, one thing, one area where I see quite a lot of achievement from the Sudanese community is indeed that academic achievement. Tell us uh, about that. I see a lot of uh, uh, Sudanese, uh, you know, professors, lawyers, and, you know, they, they're doing quite well. Um, Yes, I think you are very right. I think there is a unique motivation among Sudanese or the South Sudanese people or community in itself that uh, they see studying as uh, one of the more significant handles that you have to accomplish as a person. Hmm. And and I suppose uh, there is almost a cultural underpinning and connotation attached to it whereby almost anyone who is aspiring uh, to... Uh, be a leader in a community or in, uh, in in politics or various areas sees education as uh, a tool mm. to climb all those ladders and you know break all barriers mm-hmm. and all in, in all various walks of life mm. and a lot of them a lot of uh, young Sudanese people have really done a, a lot for themselves and mm. they have uh, you know many I see a lot graduating almost every year mm. And that did back right from 2002, 2003, and the vast number of people graduating each year from various university degrees and academic institutions is quite, quite high. Quite high, yes. And we have at the moment some that are uh, obviously paving in road. We have a Sudanese young man who is studying medicine at Melbourne University. So and a lot obviously who are who are teaching all of Australia as lecturers and mm-hmm. you know, tutors and various things and doing various sort of academic stuff and that is in a very short amount of time. Mm. And obviously a lot of them starting started arriving here in two thousand, two thousand and four, two thousand and three. Yes. And and you know, if you look at what they have achieved academically over those number of years in terms of numbers It's quite it outstanding. Is, it will very outstanding and it will raise the profile of the community down the track. Yeah, that's good. You know, uh, and many people may not know that. Uh, you you get a lot of uh, small stories in the media here where Sudanese youth is engaged in this and that, but they is, you don't have that bigger picture where there's a lot of uh, achievement in this uh, community that needs to be highlighted. I agree. Uh, yeah, and um, I mean, what uh, is there anything specific that is actually driving the Sudanese to to go for that sort of uh, uh, achievement, or is it just that the opportunities are there and they're grabbing it? I, I I don't think it is not only because of the opportunity, because if we look at it, well, there are opportunities, but again, there are a token, as you have just put reference to it, who are not utilizing them, mm. and th- those are the core that you see reflected in the media day in, day out, and mm. obviously t- tarnishing the reputation of the community. Mm. It is not only that, it is, it is the motivation that almost have uh, that almost has its origin at, at the cultural and social context in terms of looking at it, whereby uh, parents or the community or your friends or the society at large in terms of the South Sudanese or Sudanese expect that someone with a wide college job or someone with uh, an academic degree or a tertiary education is well valued and mm-hmm. well respected in the community. So a lot of not only respect in terms of obviously the job that you hold, but in terms of the change that you can do mm. and what you can fight for. For example, if you are a doctor, you will uh, find satisfaction in helping your own people mm-hmm. and treating them. Mm. If you are a lawyer, you will find you know satisfaction in helping them. Mm. If you are a nurse, it always comes back to what, as a person, mm. can you do to help your own people or your own community and That's other right. people at large. Making a difference and I think that is, that is the motivation. People want to make various forms of difference yes. in various fields. That's, that's good. Another area I would say possibly where there's also some significant achievement is, is that sort of community development level where the Sudanese are also doing quite well. Tell us a bit more about that. Yes, uh, there are a lot of 
social activities that uh, and and community programs that many people are running on pro bono basis mm -hmm. and uh, it is for example in form of a sport and you know you find that various people of various experience uh, come together for recreational and social uh, social activities such as soccer mm -hmm. or basketball mm -hmm. and then you, you use it as a tool to mentor young people mm -hmm. who obviously are less experienced compared to those who are more experienced than you obviously them uh, obviously impart on them some skills to be able to understand in a broader picture mm -hmm. the framework of life mm -hmm. and motivate them to work hard to achieve things for themselves mm. uh, it also come in form of uh, obviously uh, community organizations uh, doing and addressing a number of issues you know mm. such as uh, some issues that you find in the media being reflected be it for example you know obviously uh, helping young persons who are astray and uh, and then not doing very well in various areas mm -hmm. of their lives mm. and it also comes in terms of uh, uh, people obviously donat donating money mm -hmm. to undertake various projects and you know put them in various charity work to devolve the community itself mm. And address the issues affecting the community. So it is very, very broad, and there are lots that I may not be able to touch on. Yeah, yeah. Because I guess because of as we mentioned earlier, there's quite a number of uh, Sudanese, uh, uh, Australians, and uh, quite a lot of youth uh, as well. You need to find some way of uh, occupying, entertaining the you know the uh, uh, the people. And the government is not going to be able to do uh, that all the time. The uh, there's a social uh, sort of uh, responsibility people wanting to do more to to make a difference in, in the community. Precisely, and and you do more for yourself and, and you lead by example. Obviously, mm. the government is not going to do a lot of a lot of things for you. Mm. You, you, you do a lot. I think if you reflect it, it's like uh, John F. Kennedy saying that, ask not what the government will do for you, but <laughs> what you will do, uh, for, your you do for your own <laughs> people or yes. your own community. Yes. And yes. I think that is uh, the motivation a lot of young persons have. Absolutely. And um, another area possibly where we see some quite noticeable uh, progress is in the employment area. Yes. Sudan is uh, now in, you know, doing quite well in, t in, in terms of employment. You see Sudanese Australians in, in, in a variety of uh, uh, employment uh, context and um, tell us a bit more about that yes I think a lot a lot are really doing very well because when we first arrived here I think uh, the main point of call was to work in factories I think that is not the case now because a lot of them have been working very hard work going to factories uh, making money as well as going to universities yes. and, or TAF and failing their ways through so the shift that we see at the moment is that there are a lot who are employed in the community sector, yes. in private sector, also working for government departments yes. as you know, community liaison officers or prison liaison officers yes. or uh, justice liaison officers. You also find uh, a lot working in the private sector, such as you know, people working as a few working handful working as lawyers or a full handful working in various roles, mm. and some also who are working at universities as tutors mm. so there is there is really a huge improvement over the years and and i think for a period spanning about 10 years they're doing quite well yeah, they are doing quite well in terms of what they are achieving absolutely um that's uh, very good and maybe one one last uh, area uh, it's uh, in terms of uh, i think you touched on a little bit on that earlier in terms of social activities there uh, there's quite a lot of initiatives uh, that that involves uh, the, the Sudanese and, and, and also doing quite well even though there are some incidents and we maybe talk talk about one of the incidents that affected your own uh, soccer group but give us a bit of a picture on the um, uh, social activities. Yes, uh, I think one big drive that uh, people like myself uh, obviously find comfort in is to train young talents, you know, young talents and a young group of people coming up to put them at a social, I mean, at, at a level as, as a community, as African community that will be fraud years to come. It mm. may not be sooner, but hopefully in 30 years, 40, 50 years that we have uh, young African playing in, Soc in, in Socorro, which is obviously the Australian national team. Mm -hmm. 
and we, Jack there is already there. Yes, he, he is <laughs> playing for AFL, and we also will be proud to see that you know we have people going for Olympics and winning gold medals. Yes. So we have this soccer initiative whereby a lot of a lot of a lot of young persons uh, and and then other well experienced people in various areas of life come together we socialize engage in a rec recreational activity in form of a sport and we also use it as a mentoring uh, arena yes. whereby we help guide mentor ourselves we talk about various issues yes. we discuss you know academic pathways we also use it as a resourcing uh, arena whereby we help ourselves advise ourselves as to where best can we succeed mm. and you know where to pinpoint various young persons seeking various advice to go for help and succeed in those areas that they need to bench themselves through so it's not just soccer it's not just the the actual recreational activity there's a whole chain of things that, there that is gets precisely. put into that which which is quite good you go out to socialize and have fun play soccer but you know the friendship that you develop over yes. there and the networking that you develop over there becomes another part of your own family mm. and mm. another part of a community in itself.